Hey everyone, in the previous video we were talking about how we can calculate the density of polymers. The reason that we need to talk about this is because the amount of crystallinity within a polymer sample will change the density of the polymer product. Let's quickly recap why this is. Remember that a crystalline region of a polymer are areas where there is a dense repeating packaging of the various polymer chains, whereas in the amorphous regions we just have random packaging and it is not densely packed. Therefore, the more percent crystal in our polymer is, the higher density the material will be. As we also previously talked about, the degree of crystallinity and the amorphous regions in a given polymer sample will largely depend on several factors, such as processing conditions, additives to the polymer, the polymer makeup, and things like that. So, the equation that we introduced in the previous video for determining the percentage of crystallinity in a polymer sample can actually be used to help us find the density of a polymer if a few variables are known. The equation states that the percentage crystallinity is equal to 100% crystalline density times the difference between the sample's real density minus the 100% amorphous density, divided by the sample's real density times the difference between the 100% crystalline region density minus the 100% amorphous density. So, now that we have recapped all the information that we need, let's get into our first example. So, we are told that we are given a polymer sample which has a crystallinity of 52%. In its pure crystalline form, this polymer has a density of 2.42 kilograms per meter cubed, and in its pure amorphous form, it has a density of 2.25 kilograms per meter cubed. And we are told to find the true density of this sample. So, let's just write our equation here and determine which variables we need to find and which ones we are already given. So, let's highlight all of our variables that we have in green and the ones that we're missing in red. Therefore, we have all the variables that we need except for one, that being the true sample density. Therefore, since we only have one variable and one equation, we can now just begin rearranging the equation to solve for our unknown variable. So, let's just take a minute now and rearrange this equation for the polymer sample density. Okay. So after rearranging our equation, we have isolated it for our only unknown, and we can now plug in our known variables and solve for the sample's density. In this example, our sample has a density of 2.34 kilograms per meter cubed. Just a tip for these type of problems. If you get a density that is larger than your pure crystalline density, or a density lower than your pure amorphous density, then an error has likely occurred. All right, so let's go through another example now. Let's say that our professor gives us two samples of the same polymer type, extruded in slightly different ways. Polymer 1 has a density of 1.54 kilograms per meter cubed and is 40% crystalline. And polymer 2 has a density of 1.31 kilograms per meter cubed and is 28% crystalline. Now, let's try to find the 100% crystalline and amorphous densities. Take a second now and try solving this one on your own, and then you can compare your answers to the ones that I get. So, we have two equations and two unknowns. Therefore, our degrees of freedom is zero, meaning that we can fully solve this equation. So, let's begin with equation one and solve for one of our variables. It doesn't really matter which one you choose here, so I will just pick 100% crystalline density. Let's rearrange this equation to get all the crystalline density variables on the same side to isolate it, and create an equation to solve for it. There we go. We now have an equation that we can plug into equation two and solve for the amorphous density. As it is easier, I'm going to now move over to Microsoft Excel and show you how we can easily solve these types of questions. Let's add a cell for our crystalline and amorphous densities. Now, we can do something really cool. Let's click on the cell beside the amorphous density and go up to this little box here, and we can just simply rename this cell as PA. Then let's repeat this for PC beside the crystalline density. Through this, we can now add the equation we just found into our cell for the crystalline density. And everywhere we see the amorphous portion, we can just enter that as PA now, which makes our lives super easy. Then in another cell, we can just enter the right hand side of our second equation like so. Now, we need to use Excel's goal seek function. 
This will iteratively solve for our solution using a few parameters that we give to Excel. So to use this, let's go to data, then what if analysis, and then goal seek. Just note that this may be slightly different on Windows, but I'm sure a quick Google search will tell you how to do this on Windows. So our set cell is a cell that we want to force to a certain value. So this is a cell where we just entered in our second equation, or the right hand side of our second equation. Then we want to set this to a value of 0.28. And we want to allow Excel to change the PA cell to allow us to get our 0.28 crystalline percentage. Then by running goal seek, we can see that our second equation here is iteratively solved and PA and subsequently PC are both solved. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of how we can calculate the density of polymers based on their crystallinity. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.